this is Timmy and if you're watching this, the chances are you'd like to know the answer to the number one question. So, what moons do I use? And the answer is very simple, I only use quality of life mods such as these and sometimes I also use some aesthetic ones such as this one. But where do I get all of these cute items from? Well, first of all, these are not mods. These are all just resource packs. That's easy then, I just download the resource packs and that's it. I've done that before. <laughs> To be more specific, these kinds of resource packs are called CITs, or SITs for short, which stands for Custom Item Texture Packs. Now, while the regular vanilla texture packs change the existing texture and or the model from your game by replacing it, SITs work based on renaming an existing item. Doing so triggers the texture and or the model to change, but at the same time, the item with the original name remains unchanged, so multiple versions of the same item can can coexist in one world all at once. These custom models are considered entities, therefore they do not act like real blocks. However, in some cases you can still make them seem solid by using slabs, stairs, trapdoors or barrier blocks, which you can get by typing this command. Another cool thing about these models is that you can rotate them around to customize them even further. Sets are made by various creators in a program called Blockbench, and there are a bunch of tutorials on how to create these models yourself, so technically you can even have your favorite food or your real-life plush in Minecraft. How cool is that? So, how can you get these custom items in Minecraft? Well, it requires following a few steps, so let me walk you through it. But before I do, here's a quick disclaimer, as this is a tutorial meant for Minecraft Java Edition, and I unfortunately do not have any information on how to get sets to work in Bedrock nor Pocket Edition. Having that said, let's get right into it. Step 1. Get Optify. This mode is required for the set packs to display properly, so look up some tutorials online on how to install it. I'll try to make one as well, and when I do, it should show up somewhere on the screen right now. If you are wondering which version of the mod you should install, remember that you can download the newest version, but you can't really get a version that is older than the version required for the resource pack that you're going to use. I use Minecraft Java 1.19.1 and on this version all of the packs are working just fine. Also, from what I've noticed, when a Minecraft update is released, it usually takes about a month or so for the new compatible version of Optifine to be released as well. Usually there is a preview version of Optifine that is available much quicker than the full release, but from my experience it doesn't really work with most sit packs, so I recommend waiting for the full version. Step 2. Get fancy resource packs. So, in the description I have a list of all the set packs that I currently use along with the download links if you need some inspiration. If you'd rather see what each pack has to offer before downloading, I recommend checking out this video I made on my most used resource packs with a quick showcase of my favorite items each pack has to offer. Okay, so once you download all the resource packs you've ever dreamed of, you put them in your resource packs folder. After that, you launch your game and it should look a little like this. And the first thing that you're going to notice is that almost all of these packs are red. And this is simply because some of them are old. But they still do work, so do not worry about applying them. However, sometimes, if you are using many resource packs at once, you might have to restart your launcher a few times before it works. I have this problem even though my PC is quite beefy, so I just never close Minecraft if I'm working on a project, to be honest. When you restart your launcher, remember to always check in the task manager if Minecraft has been closed. And that's going to be that open JDK platform thingy. If you tried restarting it way too many times and it still doesn't work, what often helps is restarting your computer. And if you still can't get your game to work, then I recommend you to use fewer resource packs at once. Before I was using Sodium and Iris and it helped me a lot with my game crashing. So if you have a more budget-friendly PC, then definitely look into these mods as well as they can really boost your performance. Now, this is important. You have to pay attention to the order in which you are applying your resource packs. I recommend starting with Mizunos, as this is the base texture pack that I and many people in the community use. Then Mizunos CIT, 
and then invisible item frames. However, if you'd rather keep your regular item frames visible, for example for storage purposes, then you can generate invisible item frames with this command. If you have some additional texture packs like the fall pack for autumn or the fresh leaves blossoms for spring and you also want the leaves to be nice and detailed, keep in mind that you have to put the fresh leaves add-ons first and only then one of these two packs that I mentioned on top of them. Step 3. The catalogs. This is my favorite part and it used to be the part that I disliked the most about resource packs actually, but more on that later. So. What are catalogs and why do we need them? Well, at least at the beginning of your journey with set packs, because later on you will just memorize the names of the items you use the most and you will look up the catalogs less and less. So this is a catalog of Mizuno's 16 craft CIT and every catalog is different because these resource packs are made by different creators. But in general, what you are looking for are three pieces of information. One, what item to use to get this model, two, how to rename this item to get this model, and three, how to place the model. And again, because these are made by different creators, some names use an underscore, some do not. It's not really consistent among all the resource packs and you have to get used to it. Okay, now you know why you need the catalog. But once you get many resource packs, you will have to browse through multiple catalogs and that might result in having 20 tabs open in your browser. In other words, that would be pure chaos. That's where Notion comes in. To keep it all organized, I made this Notion template where you can very easily locate all of the resource pack catalogs and since they are all embedded, you don't need to keep opening new tabs every time you want to use one. And by the way, this template is available to download for my Patreons. Also, if you are not familiar with Notion and haven't got an account yet, you can register and use it for free literally forever by using the link in the description and trust me, it will change your life and if you ever decide to upgrade your Notion account, I will get a commission and that way you will also help me out by supporting my channel. Okay, so now let me show you the whole process and let's try to search up something like shutters. And here we have the model, here we have what item to use and what to rename it to. So you rename the item like you would normally do in vanilla Minecraft, Soviet and Anvil and let's try to rename these trapdoors. Perfect, now we have the model ready to go, so let's try to place it. And for that I'm going to use an invisible item frame texture pack because I don't mind if all my item frames are invisible. Mizuno is very intuitive, so just place an item frame on the window and then you place your shutters in this item frame and there we go. If you right click on the item, it's going to rotate clockwise and it's a very useful feature considering Minecraft's limitations. And with that said, you are officially ready to start your journey with setbacks. I really do hope that video helped you out and I wanted to thank all my dear Patreons for making it possible. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!